Hello there. Um, I thought I'd make a video about XRender. And um, this video is kind of for people who are um, either sort of beginners at uh, Linux, like if you've recently installed Arch Linux, or, um, or if you've recently switched from a desktop environment to a window manager, for example, uh, this might be useful for you. Um, now, I don't know anything about Wayland. I've been thinking of switching to Wayland, and that's kind of part of why I'm making this video. Um, I just kind of want to put out there uh, some of my limited knowledge about XRender. There's a lot of things you can do with XRender. Um, so let's talk about it. So XRender. Um, if I just type in the command, no, I'm using the fish shell, and uh, so this grayed out part is not being run here, just press enter, and um, so you can see it gives me a bunch of information about my screen. So so I'm using the X window manager, I'm not using Wayland. So if you're kind of new to all this stuff, um, this is a decision that you make. Am I going to go with X or am I going to go with um, uh, Wayland? And uh, these are for basically for displaying windows on the screen, I believe, or, uh, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> it's basically a, um, the basics of a GUI so that you can have a background and all that kind of stuff. Um, now there's more that goes into, say, like having a background and let's say like having uh, windows like this. So I'm using a window manager um, I'm using i3, and that I believe that that just sort of communicates with the um, display server. Is that what it's called? Let's let's check the man for. Actually, there's no. Is it? If I just do this, does this? No. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I'm not an expert on this stuff, but X is the so-called display server sort of um, sort of it's sort of low level and uh, the window manager is is higher level and um, it I presume it communicates directly with with my display server X so if you so Wayland is a competitor so to speak I mean this is all free and open source software so um, whatever but apparently I guess Wayland is the future because um, most of the developers who are working on X are just working on Wayland. So I'm not sure if that anyone's really actively developing X. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, and Wayland has had issues, but they're getting ironed out. Um, so that would be maybe for another a video for another time. But um, that's why I'm thinking of switching to Wayland. I don't think there'll be much benefit for me. I do occasionally have, I do have some screen tearing sometimes, particularly uh, with video content, and it's never really bothered me very much, but that's one thing that hopefully would be fixed with Wayland, hopefully. Um, anyway, so I, I haven't switched because there are there have been some lurking issues, but I think any of the issues that I would have had have been recently resolved in Wayland, I think. So that's why I'm thinking of switching. And uh, one of them was global keys, but whatever. Let's get back to XRander. So this is um, telling me about my displays. Now, so you'll use XRander, assuming you're using X. Again, I don't know anything. This is not, has nothing to do with Wayland. I don't know anything about Wayland. So setting that aside. Um, if you're using X and you use XRender, um, for example, if you want to switch your... Well, for example, my primary display is on the right. I'm having, I have two displays right now. And uh, by default, it sets the primary... Well, it doesn't know right or left, right? <laughs> it doesn't know how I position my displays. Um, I presume it... It's based on, it picks a default based on which port it is on my graphics card. But anyway, the point is that they were on the wrong side. So when I would uh, move to the left for my monitor on the left, uh, it, 
before it would block and I couldn't move and I'd have to access the monitor on my left, I'd actually have to go over here to the right. So, you know, you need to switch those around. So that's one example. Um, so let's look at some of the commands that I'm commonly doing with um, XRender. So this is the one I was just talking about. This is uh, switch, uh, setting output left of. So you have these outputs, uh, HDMI zero in my case, and DP zero um, are my two displays here. Um, uh, these are, I guess this is referring to ports. I've got an HDMI port on my graphics card. I've actually got two, so one of them's not connected. And DP is, what is that again? Display port, right? So that's connected. And you have the resolutions here. So you could, for example, set different resolutions. So I also have a 1440p display. I'm just not using it right now. Um, but if I wanted to set that to 1080p, for example, um, maybe for better performance in a, in a game, for example, um, you know, I could go in here and, and set the resolution. We'll, we'll look at that, how to set the resolution. Um, but you use this output flag to refer to some output and then say what you want to do with that output. So again, just to review, I often run this command just to see what I've got on the system. Just XRender by itself will kind of tell you what's up. Um, and I'm frequently running this command because when I, when I start my computer, uh, I run this. Now, I could just set this to run automatically. Um, but for whatever reason, I don't. I just I just run it every time. I don't. It doesn't really bother me. And uh, what else we have here? I don't know. Some of these commands maybe I've run recently that uh, maybe by mistake. I don't know why. What happens when I run this? I don't, nothing happens. Um, X render. Okay. What else do we have? On right. So I switch this off and on. Um, sometimes I like just having one display. So if I have off, then it turns off, <laughs> on turns it on. Um, yep, pretty straightforward. And uh, another useful command is auto. Now I thought up until just now, I thought that this like resets the default. So if you, but it, it is true, if you play around with XRender and you mess something up, <laughs> it can be pretty annoying. You might not be able to see the screen properly. Just do this X render auto. And in fact, I have done that. Um, that has happened to me even recently. Like I screwed something up and I couldn't see through either of my displays. And I just like, without being able to see anything, I opened a terminal, I typed in X render dash dash auto and I fixed, I fixed my problem. So that's a common thing to reset the defaults. But I noticed that it doesn't, it doesn't seem to switch on the um, the display, so that's why I'm doing this. I, I don't think that it does that, or it, yeah. Um, okay, so let's look at the T TLDR. Is this package that has uh, some useful information on various packages? So y if you want to use this, you'd have to install it. And um, so this is what I was talking about. It disables disconnected outputs. Anyway. So I just tested this and it didn't do exactly that because I was trying to turn my display back on and it was not exactly doing this. Um, but I don't know, you, you test it and see what works for you. Maybe I had something weird going on with my cable or something. Display the current state of the system. So um, I feel like this does the same thing as just typing in XRender by itself, but let's see, query. It seems to do the same thing. I, I can't tell if there's a difference there. Let's just clear this out and uh, do this again. Um, yeah, so we've talked about the first two. So this is, again, if you want to set a specific dis uh, resolution. Occasionally, uh, I've had the need for that. Um, don't really remember why. I think at the very beginning when I was uh, new to Arch Linux and using a window manager. Um, I think 
this was weird. Like, I had to set this manually or something. Um, and this is... So you can set the frame rate um, if you want to do that. And this is what I was showing earlier, setting to the right of or to the left of some other display. Um, you can simply set something off. Notice that these VGA, VGA1, these are just other ports, okay? So these are types of output. And I also didn't know this. I was, when I, I rarely set the brightness in the terminal, um, but I was using something else. I, I do this on my laptop, and um, I'm, I gotta try using X-Render, because I, or maybe I realized that, yeah, I used to use something different, but I guess you can set the brightness with X-Render, that's useful. Um, and then, I mean, that's that's about it, I think. Of course, if you have any more uh, questions, um, you can consult the ArchWiki. I want to look at the man page real quick. Also, um, let me just, um, yeah, let's see if there's anything else. I think this is pretty much all I do. Okay, so let's look at the man page here. Just in case there's anything. Um, so, if you prefer some kind of graphical user interface, I'm sure there's a bunch out there. You could look. Um, I've never really cared. So, I don't... I kind of think that uh, what I've shown you already is probably enough. Um, rotate. Oh, okay. That's useful if you have something, you know, some people have this, like, vertical display. Um, anything else? Reflect? <laughs> I'm trying to imagine, like, why you'd want to do that. Somebody somewhere has wanted to do that for some reason. And, um, I guess that's about it. Yeah. So, that's it. Yeah, so, um, a lot of my viewers already use Xrander, they already know about it, but in the past I've made videos on, uh, say, installing Arch Linux and getting some things set up, getting Polybar set up, I have videos on that. Um, I never, I don't think I did a proper video on i3, which I probably should do. Um, there were some... I wanted to make a video on i3, but there were some things that I didn't fully understand well enough for making a video, as far as uh, as far as I thought. Um, anyway, yeah, it's a simple simple video, just kind of for intended for beginners, if you will. So, if this was helpful to you, please leave a like, um, consider subscribing, helps me out, and uh, that's it. Thank you very much. Bye.